Hi everyone. Today we continue the story of Louise Lawrence Rose. As stated in the previous recording, Mrs. Rose is an educator and a current doctoral student at La Sierra University in California. The last time we spoke, Mrs. Rose spoke about how her son was diagnosed with a high concentration of lead in his body. So I want to pick up on that conversation today. And that also sparked her interest in researching how toxic lead can affect child development. So today we continue with uh, Louise Lawrence Rose's story. Hi, Louise. Welcome to the odds for part two of your story. Hi, Latoya. Thank you for having me once more. Great, great. All right. So the first time we met, we were talking about how your son was diagnosed with a high concentration of lead in his body. So I want to yes. pick today. I want to talk about how lead affected him. What's his development like now? How is he? Where is he at now? Has there been any improvement since? What are the things that you've done to ensure that there has been improvement? And what is it that you intend on doing in your research as it relates to that? Okay, so as I was explaining, I had the opportunity to test my son abroad um, and he did a complete medical and it was revealed to us that he had a high concentration of um, blood lead. His blood lead level was actually like um, way over the expected amount for, well, at least no lead in the body is good. Mm -hmm. But at least if there is just a, a minimal amount in the blood, it can be overlooked. Mm -hmm. But when he, his um, results came back, it was found that it was way too high for his age. And so the amount they say is like five microgram per deciliter of blood that is safe, although no lead is safe. But his was like in the 30s. Can you imagine? Wow. And yes. And so we were like dumbfounded. We did not understand why, how, where, when. And we actually asked them to repeat the test. Although the test came back with a, a, a lower level, like maybe in the 20s, it was still high 20s. So you know that the test is just kind of right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this thing floored us for a while. And then we started to just, you know, ask how to approach it and what to do. And we started to gain more confidence as we go along. So what would have led you to do that test? Was it that you saw some delays in your son's development or was it just a routine test? Okay, so yes, we did see delays in his development because he started off, you know, like normally um, with his mama, dada, and saying the, the, the basic, you know, words, building his vocabulary. And then after a while, we noticed that he became mute. He was just like not saying anything at all. He was just, if he wanted to um, get some feed in our water or anything, he would just take the bottle to us and, and push it on us. He's not mm -hmm. saying anything. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're thinking is because the nanny we had gave him the thumb, you know, mm -hmm. she did that to keep him quiet. So we were thinking that he was just like becoming very internal within himself because he's stuck in the thumb and he doesn't want to express himself but it was not that okay. so when he was even two years old at his second birthday we had a party everything and so forth and he got toys from family and friends and all of that and he was stuck in the thumb um so i was concerned because it was educators we have a little understanding in terms of child development and where right. they're supposed to be with certain milestones and so mm -hmm. and so i i mentioned this to the pediatrician so when the test came back she said this is the problem right here this is why he's not developing normally because mm -hmm. the lead affects 
especially their brain development. Mm. Um, so it will affect the speech. And so, you know, it was very, it was a very dark period for us. But, you know, we mm -hmm. prayed, my husband, you know, is a very praying, supportive husband. And we are strong um, Christian believers. Yes. And so we asked the Lord to help us through this phase. Mm -hmm. And he did. Um, we, we were told to go back and do the research, find out, because it has to be in its immediate environment. It's mm -hmm. either if he is going to daycare if, or at home or wherever he is, that is where right. the exposure comes from. It's not something foreign, you mm -hmm. understand? And so we had to go back and do our research. We also got a referral from the pediatrician um, in the U.S. to the Ministry of Health in Jamaica to do further research. So, you know, I, I felt a little, you know, happy about that. So the Ministry of Health team themselves came to our house mm -hmm. and they, they used their um, special machinery and so forth and they did the lead testing, they tested the paint, they tested uh, the furniture, you know, the crib that he was mm -hmm. in because it was a painted uh, kind of crib. And, um, they tested the water, they tested the toys that he played with, everything. Latoya, guess what? The highest concentration of lead that we found were in some of his toys. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. So, you know, this was very, very uh, heartrending for us. And we're thinking, yes. you know, we gifted him toys, other people gifted him toys, but it's like, if we were damaging him somewhat yes. and we never paid much attention to either the, what, what, what the manufacturers are saying. Are the toys uh, BPA free? So this is a, yes. a terminology that I want my listeners to become um, aware of. BPA, please look on any um, plastic toys or you know even material toys that your children have to see what if it says that they are BPA free. So his toys were found to have the highest concentration of lead. Um, these toys they confiscated. Uh, some were bought in Jamaica, some were from the US. And you know, we were very, very concerned even about, you know, the standards. Why are these things being allowed to happen? You know, if don't the manufacturers know, don't they, um, the, those who are buying them, taking them into the country, the importers, exporters, don't they know that these things are dangerous for children? You know, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to approach a Bureau of Standards. I wanted to, you know, do so much. But after I settled up in my emotion, I realized that the best thing that I could do was to educate persons as best as possible. Right. That this really does exist and it's uh you know it, it, it is one of the causes of our child um affecting our children's development. And so what I did because I had the opportunity to contribute to the health and family life education curriculum in Jamaica, mm -hmm. I made sure that in those grades that I was writing for, especially for safety and security, I included the information on um, how the children um, can learn how to, to identify um, even paint, if, if they're stripping paint. Because what happens is that although leaded paint was banned some years ago, um, some buildings and even some maybe some furniture might still have the paint covered over with other layers of paint. Okay. So if you are living in like an older house or apartment and it starts to strip, the, the paint starts to strip and those flakes, sometimes when the children see them, they would um, try to pull them off themselves. Right. You know, if there's a strip in paint, they would mm -hmm. try to pull it down. And so even that. And for a child like my son who loves to suck his finger, it would just immediately 
be ingested. So that's mm-hmm. one way, right? Mm-hmm. And, and as I explained, the, need to be BPA. the toys, yes. the toys, they need to be P- BPA free. And I was explaining to you that BPA stands for uh, bisphenol A, which is an industrial chemical that is being used in uh, making plastics since the 1960s. And so mm. this is very dangerous. And so if the, even the plastic bottles that you mm-hmm. drink your water from, Latoya, make sure that those bottles are saying that it is BPA-free. There's no BPA resin left in it. You know, some people just like to see a nice plastic Tupperware. You can just go somewhere cheap and buy it, but it's not safe. So make sure you look yes. for that uh, indication that it is BPA-free. All right, and so it can come even through the soil into fruits and vegetables that we eat. Okay. Another way it can come is through crayons that are not toxic free. So make sure that the crayons that you purchase, even for your, your, your younger um, children, that say that they are non toxic. You know, so, so these are just some little things yes. that we need to be aware of. Um, and he was exposed I, to this while in Jamaica. While in Jamaica. But he found out wonder. what was the cause. Yes. How many more children in are Jamaica. so exposed yes. in Jamaica yes. and not knowing? Because, I mean, I had that opportunity. How many parents have the opportunity to get a test like that? Because I can tell you that to get a repeat test for him in Jamaica was never done. My and even though I went privately, it, it was like a lot of um, checks and balances and I have to be going to the university hospital and I have to be going and back and forth and so on. So it's like the appointment, we never, over one year, we tried to get yeah. an appointment to get a blood test and mm-hmm. it could not be done. So mm-hmm. it's not easy and it's expensive and you know, I wonder, sometimes we have children in front of us who are, you know, delayed in their development as educators. Sometimes there are things affecting them. How do we know that yes. this is not as a cause of, you know, lead or even asbestos exposure? And so I really became interested in that area and to become an advocate for that. And we, you, in the United States, there is routine testing for children. Um, their blood lead levels. That's okay. a routine test. So like mm-hmm. how when we're, our children are going back to school, we say, okay, come back with a medical mm-hmm. and we expect them to have these um, tests done. If you're in America, a blood lead level test would have to be one of those routine tests. And we don't have that in Jamaica. Okay. Right? Yeah, so we might um, start having it sooner than later. Yes. Children who live close to gas stations, you know, uh, city dumps, and so forth because of the, the, the variety of things that are disposed there can be exposed to lead. And I don't know if you know of um, what happened in Jamaica some years ago, about 20 years ago, with um, those children up in Kintyre who were exposed to lead through the water that was coming in. Yes. Um, so there, there, there was a, 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 a big breakout in that area. And okay. so there was a big intervention in Jamaica about some 20 years ago. And um, an education program. But that kind of um, phased out in a way. But it's mm-hmm. still very, very much needed today. Because it's not like the problem has gone away. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it has even, you know... Um, become even greater with our mm-hmm. understanding because um, there is also studies being done in Jamaica to find out whether some um, persons who live close to even places where they do a lot of mining mm-hmm. of the, the soil, if that is affecting them, the lead that comes out of the soil and they mm-hmm. live in such close proximity to these areas, right, where they do the bauxite mining, yes. it's affecting them. So like some areas that um, they were looking at in perhaps Clarendon and so forth, that there was a flare-up of violence and aggression and so forth. Yes. I believe there was one 
coming out to look if that was one of the effects of lead exposure. Wow. So it's, 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 it's wide. Yeah. You understand? It, and it to me that, that um, in order, if, it's, if the concentration was higher, they would have had to use a lead to remove it. But then right. we were able to correct it with diet. So let's talk more right. about it. So if it was greater than 45 um, microgram of um, lead per deciliter of, of lead in the blood, then they would have had to remove it using lead itself to remove the lead from the body. So because his was not over 45 microgram per deciliter of blood, it was okay for diet and, you know, to be used to get it out. So we had a special diet for him. Um, so the foods included calcium rich foods, food with zinc and iron, especially iron to, you know, help to keep the lead out and to aid in lowering the lead levels. And also, you know, green leafy vegetables, which, you know, he wouldn't take at that age, but like blending it and, and mixing it into things like soups and so forth that he would get. And also, um, I remember 1% um, milk and some other things that were, you know, really strict on his diet. And, and when he did over the test, since he has been in the U.S., it has come back um, safe. So he's back in the safe zone. Okay, yes. Great, so great. yes. But you know, when, when the Ministry of Health personnel came and they did their testing, um, they did also ask us to remove a crib that he was sleeping in. It had a very low, like three, I think about three percent, something like that, but we still got rid of it. We didn't, we didn't want anything around us mm -hmm. that had um led in it and they went even to the daycare that he used to stay at and they did their testing there and they didn't find anything either. Okay. Um we also yeah. wondered yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness, let's talk about that. He is a totally different child. We're talking about not talking. Right now he would talk me out. He would talk me out and he is very it's like all those uh, months that he was there not talking he was absorbing so much information so it's just like no he's just letting it out and he's asking so many questions lot of it's counting to some numbers that i have to go and get my calculator honestly he's doing some calculations in his brain and so forth so he's very advanced no, yes, he's yes. at you know he has surpassed even children his own age. So we give God mm -hmm. thanks for that. Mm -hmm. And and you know, as Bible believing people, one scripture that gave me comfort is that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yes. But once the knowledge comes, you know, the Lord helps us to be free and to be empowered. Yes. And yes. when we are empowered, then we help to empower others. And so that has that was the the, the, the motivation for my research. Yes. Because even for my master's research, I did not do anything great. I did a case study, you know, it wasn't anything that, oh wow, look at this study. Just a case study about a very effective educator and all of that. Because I really didn't have a passion, passion so forth for a particular topic. Right. But this has become my passion. Mm -hmm. Although I met up on a roadblock when I got here, um, I was not able to get my chair to supervise the lead study because it's also environmental science. So that's a, mm -hmm. another disconnect. And mm -hmm. I am in the area of um, curriculum and instruction. Okay. Started off first in um, educational psychology, mm -hmm. but um, I kind of carry both of them and then I'll decide like in my final final year whether I want to go over into psychology or curriculum and instruction it's a okay, kind of thing are, with so you are you are in your final year now at La Sierra no no okay. I, let's talk about that right. La Sierra journey how did you right La Sierra in the first instance all right so I've always wanted to study abroad. 
and mm -hmm. I had the opportunity in my younger years when I did my undergrad and even once when I did my master's to, to do work and travel programs abroad to finance my education. And so whenever I would travel, I would uh, find myself at these pool fairs and I would get the information booklet about how to study abroad and all of this and so forth. But it always seemed a little out of my reach, whether the finances, whether, you know, the GREs, that exam that I have to sit, uh, housing, whatever it was. And so I always, but I did apply. I did get through to Andrews University. I also got through to Nova Southeastern University in Florida. And I started one semester with Nova. And because life happened, the children came, I kind of stopped again. So it's like mm -hmm. every new year, the resolution was that I'm going to continue my PhD, mm -hmm. right? So in... Yeah, when I started the, the journey, I had to stop and then I, it's all over. Yes, right. Great. So in 2019... In 2019, uh, that January, I said, okay, this is it. And I started at Northern Caribbean University in the counseling psychology program because I came up with a counseling psychology background, okay. as I would have explained to you earlier about being a guidance counselor mm -hmm. and having that um, background. So um, I was one year in with um, Northern Caribbean University and then with some students from last year university visited the ministry of education they were having uh implementation of the um what you call it now there is this intervention with um getting the students more um accessible um to information in general not just Jamaican um, literature, but all over the U.S. and so forth, through videos, through um, different books and so forth, e-books. So it was called the e-library project. Okay. So they, they would be given this um, thumb drive that would use microcompression to hold a lot of information. So even if they didn't have data, at home, they would be allowed to explore libraries, videos, and so forth to get their research done. Right. So I was asked by my director to oversee this project, right? Mm -hmm. It was like an addition to everything else that I was doing, but I did not say no. And so by doing this project, um, supporting the team, I was like the point person on the ground to them to get the data. Uh, because a number of schools were piloting the program. There were teachers who needed to give their uh, feedback on the, the device, students, um, and the, the principals themselves and how it was helping their students um, in their exams and so forth. So it took some time to get the information. Um, so just by interacting with the team, I, I Ask them, you know, what's the process like? How do I get to last year university? And I was, you know, explain the process and so forth and, and was told that actually right now they are doing short listing, you know, for persons who are coming and so forth. So you would need to apply and this is the website and so forth and so on. Wow. And so I got a little hand holding right there from mm -hmm. you know especially one um young lady who was on the team who took a special interest in that for me and helped me just walk me through and when whenever like i would send something on she would walk it through here for me to to make sure that it got to this department and if that person received it she would give me a feedback and so forth so it was just like uh as she was a sent for me we would call her like a destiny helper you know, wow. to help because she never left me through the wow. process. And um, the beautiful thing about it was that La Sierra University would accept me without the GREs first. And when I got here within my first semester, my first quarter, I would have to sit it. And I would have to pass it within the first quarter that that was a chance to also, okay. I would get another opportunity if I failed it the first quarter, but I had to sit it at the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And so, Latoya, I came up. 
For those oh, who don't I'm, know what GRE is, what, what is it? The graduate record exam. So, you know, okay. like for when you're entering, um, if you want to study abroad, maybe like in high school, you probably have to do the SATs. Mm -hmm. So when you have to do graduate um, studies now from your master's, um, I think for, for the bachelor's, you have to do the SATs, I'm not sure. But for the master's and the, and the PhD, of course, you have to do your graduate records exam. So okay. you have to be able to um, impress the examiners that you have a certain level of understanding and awareness Okay. based on this exam right mm -hmm. and so um i came up i did my first quarter i passed my first quarter and then i had a GRE to sit and, and by the grace of god i got it on the first try i was through you know and and, and i give god thanks for that and i'm telling you, it was not easy it wasn't easy because even the morning to find the examination site and everything mm -hmm. it was very very confusing but you know god helped me and i was out of there um so coming to last year at first let me tell you that i did not even have the first dollar to pay the school fee mm -hmm. right right so to do that interview in front of that panel of you know educators and you know professors and all of this it was very very um nerve-wracking for me but you know i pulled through even that morning i remember that morning when i was supposed to do the interview i was called to do an intervention at donald quarry high school there was um death of two students tragically and i had to take a team there or or you know be a part of a support team that was going there and so we had to do that intervention and so i couldn't even get back home in time to do the interview i asked the lab technician at the school to set it up for me and he set me up on zoom and i so i did it right there at the school so you know it was just a lot of challenges but i overcome each of the hurdles by the grace of god and um, they were impressed. And uh, when I got that letter, Latoya, when I got that offer letter in mm -hmm. my hand, and it says, you are offered a space at last year university. It was just like, uh, like someone give me the, um, the map for a, a treasure. My God. Yeah, like this is a treasure map and you're going to find a treasure somewhere. So this is like the goal. This is what yes. you needed. This is what you're looking for. That's and really so I held on to that tenaciously yes. because I said, okay, this is it. And with that offer letter, I was able to just, you know, by faith, propel myself forward. I remember going to a prayer meeting um one of my friends invited me and i brought my sister and you know i was just there you know nicely worshiping and so forth the pastor picked me out and he said come to the altar and he said raise your hands to the heaven and let her if you know me i don't i don't like these things you know i don't like these public kind of show you know but i obeyed and he said you are believing the Lord for something beyond your capacity. Wow. And he said, look at me. The Lord said, yes. Mr. Wow. Latoya, that's all I needed in my spirit. Because the spirit tell me yes already, you know. Yes. This person who I know not before came yes. and he confirmed it. And he yes. said, the Lord said, yes. Wow. And I just, you know, I brought down in tears. I praise the Lord. I worship because I know that it meant that He is going to make the way where I saw no way. Yes. And I'm telling you, like one day before I was um, do the interview at the embassy, I got that sponsor who said that they were going to send that um that money for me the sponsorship mm -hmm. amount because I had I did not have that money neither did I have anybody in my family who could put up so much money to say Louise will be able to stay in the US for all these years wow. you know yes. and be able to finance her education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so by the grace of God each step of the way he makes a provision for me yes. I cannot but 
talk about last year university church. So there's this church, the the church adjoining uh, uh, the school, which is a school church, um, where chapel for the students and also church for the school community. And this church, I mean, if it's food, I remember in the heat of the pandemic, mm -hmm. they were just delivering boxes of food, you know, to us as students. Um, I remember once, um, I think it was last December, I, I believe the Lord for a car. Like, I knew I was going to get a car. I prayed, I asked for it. I never had the money again. Yes. And I saw one of the pastors advertising her car on Facebook and mm -hmm. said, interested persons, comment below. And I said, I'm interested. So when she called me now and said, Louise, let's talk about the car. Let's negotiate. Um, how much money do you have? I said, I don't have any money. I was right. making a statement of faith. That's right. So she said, you know, I would love to give the car to you, but you know, we need to sell so that we can upgrade and all of that. But I look out for something for you. And true to her word, some weeks later, she called me and she said, there is this couple that is gifting a car to the church mm -hmm. and uh, she thinks our family is ideal to get it. And I'm telling you, Latoya, I get that car. When I get the car, the car was in good condition. It was full of gas. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, just ready. When I brought it to the DMV, you know, like you bring it to um, the depot in Jamaica to test it for everything, to see if it's road ready. Everything mm -hmm. was sticking up. And it's not an old junk. Yes. It was good, good work in vehicle. I was gifted. And, you know, I did my, my driver's, um, my test, did mm -hmm. the first part of it. I got, got through. And so, and, and I'm just thank the Lord. It's just like, see it step of the way. I, yes. I tend not to worry. I tend not to, you know, fret about what's tomorrow going to bring. How am I going to pay the next fees? Because I just believe that the Lord is the one who brought me here. Yes. And yes. I see where he's making the provision each step of the way. Yes. And I'm just trusting him, you know. And I, I realize that my being here is not for fame or to say, you know, I'm brighter than anybody and mm -hmm. whatever. It's just for the glory of God, yes. you know, to be manifested through me. And so I made myself available for him to use. So as I was explaining about the study, I had to segue into um, autism because I did not have a chair to supervise the lead study because that's environmental mm -hmm. study. And okay. so what I have decided to do is to look at um, there is there is some research um, being done even in Jamaica right now to find out if lead exposure leads to autism. Okay. So I will include that in my studies as well. Okay. So it's just a faith journey. Yes. It's 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 me and the Lord and step by step we're going on. Let me give you one more example. Um, last year too, in the heat of COVID, you know with the pandemic and the stay-at-home orders, anything that you're affected by, if it is a mental illness, it's going to flare up. If it's, a, if it's a physical sickness, it's going to flare up. Mm. I think it's a whole, it's a whole stay-at-home, the, the whole shutdown, the whole, like, the, this, the, the, it's like a, a whole, it's like you're in a box. Mm -hmm. It's like you're just shut down psychologically. So whatever mm -hmm. happening, it's gonna it's gonna flare up. That's what I, I, I that's what my theory. Anyway, so I had a tooth, I had a bad tooth, and last year I felt it throbbing and throbbing and throbbing. And I said, Lord Jesus. And so I started to take my little painkillers and all of this and so forth. But one day it gave me a start to let me know that hey, something is happening here. Throw me down. Wow. When I did my insurance, mm -hmm. I realized that the, the, the aspect of it that had to do with dental was just emergency. Mm -hmm. So there, the medical part is fine. I can get anything done medically, but dental, because over here, it's not like, oh, Sajikora or whatever in Jamaica, when you get 
you get vision, you get dental, you get physical. It's just all inclusive. Everything over here is just like itemized. But dental mm -hmm. is different from vision, is different from medical. And so the, the, the dental was emergent dental. When I asked them what this means, they said it's like, okay, if you're in an accident or something like that and you lose their teeth, then they can, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so having a condition before you know having this previous condition where it's filled and what that's not an emergency that kind of teeth ready for mad me you know mm -hmm. and it's not an emergency yes. anyway i went to you know i think i went to two dentists and just for them to do their examination it was an arm and a leg for me especially as mm -hmm. a student and by the way let me tell you that i I worked for one quarter while I, I, I came here. So I got a job as a graduate assistant. Mm -hmm. And after one quarter, I was told that I was not able to continue because of budgetary reasons. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I've not landed another job since. So mm -hmm. to show you that it's by the grace of God oh, that I am yes. here. Yes. I have not worked since uh, uh, December of 2019. And in, in a pandemic, and I'm in a PhD program in the U.S. And I, I applied for my study leave from the Ministry of Education. I did not get it. So I'm on no pay leave. Wow. So when I tell you that it's just God, wow. it is. Yes. So I applied for my um, study leave at the ministry, but I was not successful because I didn't meet the requirement based on the time i was made permanent i didn't meet the requirement to get the leave mm -hmm. and even though that is study i i actually started my proposal at the ministry because at the time they had um an in uh, action research scheme mm -hmm. at the ministry where you know if you had an action research topic you could um join the the, the team and you could could do your study um, and get your study published in an academic journal, journal that was being put out by the Ministry of Education. So I started mm -hmm. the process there. Mm -hmm. and, and so the team, the, the permanent secretary, everybody knew what my topic was. They were supportive of it and everything. Actually, I was recommended for the leave. I was given a very strong recommendation um, along with my leave letter to the Office of the Services Commission, but it didn't go through. Um, and so I, I am not on paid leave either. Wow. But have you been there, you've the been there how long now? How long have you been since there? Since 2019, September. So September coming will be two full years. OK, so and the program? The program is for five years, but you can complete before. And as I said, I have one year, one full year transferred credits from Northern mm -hmm. Caribbean University. Okay. And so basically, as soon as I finish this coursework, I just need to go into the dissertation. But I don't necessarily have to physically be present in classes to do the dissertation. Right. Right. So I am really looking to just complete the coursework portion of things and so move on to this study. Okay. Um, it has been a journey and I can tell you that I have been closer drawn to the Lord because of all of it, because it's only trust him now. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the only trust him now situation. Yes. I was telling you about it too. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I have the tools and every dentist I went to, they would um, charge me to just do the assessment. Mm -hmm. And when I look at what they were telling me for a root canal, the cheapest option was to just pull it out, just to extract yes. it. And I decided I was going to extract the tooth. The day I went to extract the tooth, the tooth, it hurt me like never before. And guess what? They said they can't extract it because it's my blood pressure is too high and the pain threshold is too high. So it's mm -hmm. not safe to do an extraction. 
And I said, oh, my God, how much more can I bear? So they gave me antibiotics. They gave me painkiller to go back home with it. And I tell you, I couldn't miss, like, if it's four hours, by three hours and 55 minutes, I need to take that other painkiller because the throbbing is coming oh. on. You understand? Yes. And um, and especially at night. I don't know why at night to take a hot so. That's what I heard. Mighty God. <laughs> Mighty God. God. Mm -hmm. So, let me tell you why I was not to extract that tooth. The Lord had prepared for me to get a root canal, and I didn't know. So, a friend of mine, she said, and by the way, I can call her name. She's Coral Sheffield. She's a friend of the family. And I asked her if I can use her name, and she said yes. That that little lady, oh my God, God bless her soul. She said, Louise, don't extract it too. I will help you. Um, find out how much it is and I will help you to pay for it. So I was searching around, searching around now some almost two thousand dollars to do root canal. Two thousand US I'm talking about. It. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Latoya, um, I I was like, oh my goodness, no, I can't. And then she said, she called me. And she said, Louise, I I've heard about this dentist. He's Jamaican, and he's um Doctor Bond. And this is his number, whatever. Call him and and find out, you know, if he'll give you a discount and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I called Doctor Bond. And I told him, you know, the challenges I've been having and everything and so forth. And I said, every dentist I go to, they want to do me to pay at least twenty dollars to do the assessment first before, because nobody is taking anybody else's word for it that this is what is the problem. Everybody has to do their own X-ray yes. and do their own diagnosis. So anyway, he said, okay, come in on Monday, and I will not charge you to do the examination. And so he looked at the tools, he did the x-ray, everything, and he was showing me on the results where the infection was and so forth, and that, you know, they really needed the root canal. And then I just heard him say, because he had asked me in the interview, you know, where are you from? Where in Jamaica are you from? And what are you doing here? And all of that. And so I was telling him I was a student, and I was telling him the problem with the insurance that it doesn't cover um, certain things and so on and so forth. So after he did his examination, you now he just said to his assistant, give me this, give me that, give me that, that, that. And he just started to ask for everything that he needed. And within a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, I was out of the dentist's mm -hmm. office with a root canal. And he said, back in January for the crown. Mm -hmm. um, so now I was a little bit, you know, I was like, oh my God, I was there thanking God the whole time. And I was a little bit scared to ask him, what does that mean? And I come back in January, I'm to, to pay because I don't have any money. I didn't come there with any money. Yes. So, you know, I, was, I didn't want to ask. So I said, come back in January for the crown. So when I was going to the lobby now, I noticed nobody at the front desk asking me anything. So I said, okay, let me just leave. When I was at the bus stop now, I got a call and it was from Dr. Bond. And I said, oh my goodness, I should have stopped at the front desk. I should have made an arrangement to pay or whatever. So when I answered the phone and he said, who is this? And I said, it's Louise. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the wrong number. I, I just called back the last number that called me. So I just asked him, I said, Dr. Bond, what does it mean? Does it mean that when I come in January, I will have to pay? or start a payment plan or something. He said, no, 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 it's a Christmas present. Merry Christmas. Wow. And I was like, God, wow. you could do all you love me so. Look at God. Oh, my goodness. And when I look at God, yeah. and when I went back in January, he was telling me that when he came to that plaza, he couldn't even afford the rent for one of the cubicles. And now he owns a whole plaza. So it's more than just dentistry he does there. It's a whole mission field. Mm. And so the Lord had it in, to, in, in his plan for me to get the wood canal. That's why when I went to extract the tooth, it could not happen, it's you know? Right. Yes. yes. I'm telling you, God is so amazing. He's awesome. And so he's awesome. And yes. so these are the, these are the testimonies. And there are, there are so many. The scholarships. You know, 
you were telling me about the scholarship the scholarship scholarships I one time I got three scholarships I saw I was on the scholarship committee and um at the meeting and I saw my name went up three times but at first I saw I saw I, I, I saw the first one and I thought it was a mistake and then I saw my name twice so I thought oh I got two scholarships mm -hmm. and then after that when I got the email it was three scholarships so Louise you are qualified for the this scholarship the that scholarship the that scholarship three in one what? and that's just God so right God. now right now even before September September before fall begins, I have scholarships ready for fall quarter. My God. Already. Yes. It's ready, ready for me to go. So I realize that I'm not here on my own. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the Lord has me here for a reason. And I just want to fulfill the purpose for which He has called me yes. here. Yes. And as you know, I have the children, and the reason, Latoya, I'm just gonna bring it back to the first um interview, why I don't leave the children. It's difficult with them and everything, but I can't. It's just like I have these two great things that I have to accomplish. One of them is, you know, to get this uh, terminal degree. But you know, learning never ends, so we are lifelong learners. But the next one is I have to keep the family together. It's just like based on what I have been through and how I have been, you know, from pillar to post as a young child, there is no exchanging one for the other. Yeah, it's yeah. not like I can give up the family for the education or the education yes. for the family. I have to carry both of them. Yes. And so every day I have to defy the odds to yes. make that happen. Yes. 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 <laughs> Louise <laughs> Lawrence Rose. Yes, my, dear. my God. Yes, my dear. Thank you so much for spending another afternoon with me, continuing yes. on this journey. It is a beautiful journey of how by faith we can accomplish our dreams. God has answered some prayers that you've prayed for. Um, when God has something in his plan and in his will for us, he will bring it to pass. And I've learned that from your story. He works upon the desires of your heart. It was a part of his plan to do this for you. And as you said, it is all for his glory. I'm looking forward to the work that you will do when you come back to Jamaica with your, with your degree and the, the dissertation that you would have written and all of what you would have learned, how you would have executed it in our country and helped to develop our educational sector here in Jamaica, continue to develop our educational sector. Thank you once more for talking to me on the Find the Odds. I am sure your story is going to help somebody else overcome. Thank you, Louise. It has been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. God bless.